Hello everyone, welcome back to The Christian Prodigy. Today we are going over 2 Samuel 5 and 1 Chronicles 11 through 12. So let's get right into it. Chapter 5, David becomes king over all Israel. All the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, We are your own flesh and blood. In the past, while Saul was king over us, you were the one who led Israel on their military campaigns. And the Lord said to you, You will shepherd my people Israel, and you will become their ruler. When all the elders of Israel had come to King David at Hebron, the king made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was thirty years old when he became king, and he reigned forty years. In Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. And in Jerusalem, he reigned over all Israel and Judah thirty-three years. David conquers Jerusalem. The king and his men marched to Jerusalem to attack the Jebusites, who lived there. The Jebusites said to David, You will not get in here. Even the blind and lame can ward you off. They thought, David cannot get in here. Nevertheless, David captured the fortress of Zion, which is the city of David. On that day, David had said, Anyone who conquers the Jebusites will have to use the water shaft to reach those lame and blind, who are David's enemies. That is why they said, they say, the, the blind and lame will not enter the palace. David then took up residence in the fortress and called it the city of David. He built up the area around it from the terraces inward. And he became more and more powerful, because the Lord God Almighty was with him. Now Hiram, king of Tyre, sent envoys to David along with cedar logs and carpenters and stonemasons, and they built a palace for David. Then David knew that the Lord had established him as king over Israel, and had exalted his kingdom for the sake of his people Israel. After he left Hebron, David took more concubines and wives in Jerusalem, and more sons and daughters were born to him. These are the names of the children born to him there. I'm not going to go over the names. David defeats the Philistines. When the Philistines heard that David had, had been anointed king over Israel, they went up in full force to search for him. But David heard about it and went down to the stronghold. Now the Philistines had come and spread out in the valley of Rephaim. I don't know. So David inquired of the Lord, Shall I go and attack the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hands? The Lord answered him, Go, for I will surely deliver the Philistines into your hands. So David went, in, went to Baal, and there he defeated them. He said, As waters break out, the Lord has broken out against my enemies before me. So, the pa so that place was called Baal. The Philistines abandoned their idols there, and David and his men carried them off. Once more the Philistines came up and spread out into the valley. So David inquired of the Lord, and he answered, Do not go straight up, but circle around behind them, and attack them in front of the pul pulper trees. As soon as you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the pulper trees, move quickly, because that will mean the Lord has gone out in front of you to strike the Philistines to strike the Philistine army. So David did as the Lord commanded him, and he struck down the Philistines all the way from Gibeon to Gezer. Alright. So that was two Samuel five. First Chronicles eleven. All Israel came together to David at Hebron and said, We are your own flesh and blood. In the past, even while Saul was king, you were the one who led Israel on their military campaigns. And the Lord your God said to you, You will shepherd my people Israel, and you will become their ruler. When all the elders of Israel had come to King David at Hebron, he made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel, as the Lord had promised through Samuel. 
David and all the Israelites marched to Jerusalem, that is Jebus. The Jebusites who lived there said to David, You will not get in here. Nevertheless, David captured the fortress of Zion, which is the city of David. David had said, Whoever leads the attack on the Jebusites will become commander-in-chief. Joab, son of Zeruiah, went up first, and so he received the command. David then took up residence in the fortress, and so it was called the city of David. He built up the city around it from the terraces to the surrounding wall, while Joab restored the rest of the city. And David became more and more powerful because the Lord Almighty was with him. These were the chiefs of David's mighty warriors. They, together with all Israel, gave his kingship strong support to extend it over the whole land, as the Lord had promised. This is the list of David's mighty warriors. Jashobiam, a Hakmonite, was chief of the officers. He raised his spear against three hundred men, whom he killed in one encounter. Next to him was Eleazar, son of Dodai, the Ahohite, one of the three mighty warriors. He was with David at Pass Demim when the Philistines gathered there for battle. At a place where there was a field full of barley, the troops fled from the Philistines. But they took their stand in the middle of the field. They defended it and struck the Philistines down. And the Lord brought about a great victory. Three of the thirty chiefs came down to David at the rock at the cave of Adullam, while a band of Philistines was encamped in the valley of Rephaim. At that time David was in the stronghold, and the Philistine garrison was at Bethlehem. David longed for water and said, Oh, that someone would get me a drink of water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem. So the three broke through the Philistine lines, drew water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem, and carried it back to David. But he refused to drink it. Instead, he poured it out to the Lord. God forbid that I should do this, he said. Should I drink the blood of these men who went at the risk of their lives? Because they risk their lives to bring it back, David would not drink it. Such were the exploits of the three mighty warriors. Abishai, the brother of Joab, was chief of the three. He raised his spear against three hundred men whom he killed, and so he became as famous as the three. He was doubly honored above the three, and became their commander, even though he was not included among them. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, a valiant fighter from Kabziel, performed great exploits. He struck down Moab's two mightiest warriors. He also went down into a pit on a snowy day and killed a lion. And he struck down an Egyptian who was five cubits tall, although the Egyptian had a spear like a weaver's rod in his hand. Benaiah went against him with a club. He snatched the spear from the Egyptian's hand and killed him with his own spear. Such were the exploits of Benaiah, son of Jehoiada. He, too, was as famous as the three mighty warriors. He was held in greater honor than any of the thirty, but he was not included among the three, and David put him in charge of his bodyguard. The mighty warriors were Azahel, the brother of Joab, Elhanan, son of Dodo from Bethlehem, Shamath the Herorite, Helez the Pelonite, Ira son of Ikish from Tekoa, Abiezer from Anathoth, Sebekai the Hushathite, Hai the Aohite, Maharai the Natophathite, Heled son of Benah the Natophathite, Ithai son of Ribai from Gibeah in Benjamin, Benaiah the Parathonite, Hurai, from the ravines of Gash, Abiel, the Arbathite, Asmaveth, the Baharamite, Eliaba, the Shalbanite, the sons of Hashem, the Gizonite, Jonathan, son of Shaggi, the Herorite, Ahiam, son of Sakar, the Herorite, Eliphal, son of Ur, Hefer, the Mecharathite, Ahijah, the Pelonite, Hezro, the Carmelite, Nerai, son of Ezbi, Joel, the brother of Nathan, Mibhar, son of Hagrai, Zelek the Ammonite, Nahari the Barothite, the armor-bearer of Joab, son of Zeroi, Ira the Ithrite, Gareb the Ithrite, Uriah the Hittite, Zabad, son of Ali, 
Adonai, son of Shizra, the Reubenite, who was chief of the Reubenites, and the thirty with him, Hanan, son of Makkah, Josaphat, the Mithnite, Uzziah, the Astrophite, Shema, and Jeel, the sons of Hotham, the Arorite, Jediel, son of Shimri, his brother Joha, the Tizite, Eliel, the Mahavite, Jerabai, and Joshaviah, the sons of Elnam, Ithma, the Moabite, Eliel, Obed, and Jaseel, the Muzabite. First Chronicles 12 These were the men who came to David at Ziklag, while he was banished from the presence of Saul, son of Kish. They were among the warriors who helped him in battle. They were armed with bows and were able to shoot arrows or to sling stones right-handed or left-handed. They were relatives of Saul from the tribe of Benjamin, Ahiezer, their chief, and Joash, the sons of Shema, the Gibeathite, Jeziel, and Pelet, the sons of Asmaveth, Berakah, Jehu, the Anathite, and Ishmaiah, the Gibeonite, a mighty warrior among the thirty, who was a leader of the thirty, Jeremiah, Jehaziel, Johanan, Jozabad, the Gadarathite, Eluzai, Jeremoth, Bealiah, Shemariah, and Shephatiah, the Harufite, Elkanan, Ishiah, Azarel, Joezer, and Jeshabiam, the Korahites, and Jola, and Zebediah, the sons of Jeroham, from Gedor. Some Gadites defected to David at his stronghold in the wilderness. They were brave warriors, ready for battle and able to handle the shield and spear. Their faces were the faces of lions, and they were as swift as gazelles in the mountains. Ezra was the chief, Obadiah the second in command, Eliab the third, Mishmana the fourth, Jeremiah the fifth, Atai the sixth, Eliel the seventh, Johanan the eighth, Elzabad the ninth, Jeremiah the tenth, and Machbani the eleventh. These Gadites were army commanders. The least was a match for a hundred, and the greatest for a thousand. It was they who crossed the Jordan in the first month when it was overflowing all its banks, and they put to flight everyone living in the valleys, to the east and to the west. Other Benjamites and some men from Judah also came to David in his stronghold. David went out to meet them and said to them, If you have come to me in peace to help me, I am ready for you to join me. But if you have come to betray me to my enemies, when my hands are free from violence, may the God of our ancestors see it and judge you. Then the Spirit came on Amasai, chief of the thirty, and he said, We are yours, David. We are with you, son of Jesse. Success, success to you, and success to those who help you, for your God will help you. So David received them and made them leaders of his raiding bands. Some of the tribe of Manasseh defected to David when he went with the Philistines to fight against Saul. He and his men did not help the Philistines because, after consultation, their rulers sent him away. They said, It will cost us our heads if he deserts to his master Saul. When David went to Ziklag, these were the men of Manasseh who defected to him, Adna, Josabad, Jediael, Michael, Josabad, Elihu, and Zelathai, leaders of units of a thousand in Manasseh. They helped David against raiding bands, for all of them were brave warriors, and they were commanders in his army. Day after day men came to help David until he had a great army, like the army of God. These are the numbers of the men armed for battle who came to David at Hebron to turn Saul's kingdom over to him, as the Lord had said from Judah, carrying shield and spear, six thousand eight hundred armed for battle, from Simeon, warriors ready for battle, seven thousand one hundred, from Levi, four thousand six hundred, including Jehoiada, leader of the family of Aaron, with three thousand seven hundred men, and Zadok, a brave young warrior, with twenty-two officers from his family, from Benjamin, Saul's tribe, three thousand, most of whom had remained loyal to Saul's house until then. From Ephraim, brave warriors famous in their own clans, twenty thousand eight hundred. 
from half the tribe of Manasseh designated by name to come and make David king eighteen thousand. From Issachar, men who understood the times and knew what Israel should do, two hundred chiefs with all their relatives under their command. From Zebulun, experienced soldiers prepared for battle with every type of weapon to help David with undivided loyalty, fifty thousand. From Naphtali, one thousand officers together with thirty-seven thousand men carrying shields and spears. From Dan, ready for battle, twenty-eight thousand six hundred. From Asher, experienced soldiers prepared for battle, forty thousand. And from east of the Jordan, from Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, armed with every type of weapon, one hundred twenty thousand. All these were fighting men who volunteered to serve in the ranks. They came to Hebron fully determined to make David king over all Israel. All the rest of the Israelites were also of one mind to make David king. The men spent three days there with David, eating and drinking, for their families had supplied provisions for them. Also their neighbors from as far away as Issachar, Zebulun, and Naphtali came bringing food on donkeys, camels, mules, and oxen. There were plentiful supplies of flour, fig cakes, raisin cakes, wine, olive oil, cattle, and sheep, for there was joy in Israel.